on this episode of the Infinite Art Hunt. Maddox McMichaels. He was at the convention, I showed it to him. And he loved it. He called it unoriginal and rudimentary and said Sonic Sable's hands look like claws. Micmac Paddywhack is rudimentary. That's very specific. I think you're talking about being an ally. And that means showing support for someone for whatever decisions that they decide to make. Even if you don't like her decision? Yeah. Lead support for this program has been provided by the William Penn Foundation with additional support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Sidewater Family Foundation, the Thomas Locke Charitable Fund, and viewers like you. Boom, bam, yoinks! Hello, art hunters, and welcome to the super-powered episode of the Infinite Art Hunt. I am traveling around the globe, well, mostly Philadelphia, and a little bit of New Jersey, to learn everything I can about art this summer. But for today's episode, I didn't even have to leave my Grandma Tilly's studio. Hidden under the Arbor Day decorations, I uncovered this collection of ancient comics from Grandma Tilly. Some of these even go back to 1973. I don't know a ton about comics, so this is the perfect subject for an art hunt. And I have the best guest ever, tween comic artist Sable Williams. This is Sable's comic, Sonic Sable. Cool, huh? She's at a comic book convention right now showing her comic to other artists. I bet she's having a great time. Freddy! Oh, Sable, perfect timing. Come in, talk to our audience. Um, hi everybody. Freddie, I thought we were hanging out. We will, but the Art Hunt viewers are gonna wanna meet a real comic artist. Well, I'm not really into comics anymore. <laughs> Excuse me? I thought you were coming from the comic book convention. Yeah, but I left early. Wanna get a water ice? Water ice? Now? We're in an art crisis. Stay tuned, Art Hunters. We'll be right back. It's the Infinite Art Hunt! Another adventure with Fred, looking for art and making friends. Checking in with Grandma Tilly, the adventure never ends. We're gonna go to real places, find magic and wonder, and try new things and see what we can discover. There's art everywhere, and I really wanna explore. It's in the food that we eat, in the trees, in the forest. It's the infinite art. It's the infinite. What makes you want to give up comics? I thought you loved Sonic Sable. I just don't like it anymore. Did you show your comic to that McDonald Mac? Maddox McMichaels. He was at the convention, I showed it to him. And he loved it? He called it unoriginal and rudimentary and said Sonic Sable's hands look like claws. Micmac Paddywhack is rudimentary. Maddox McMichaels. He said putting a character in a wheelchair was trying too hard. But your dad is in a wheelchair, and I loved the turbo monster chair you gave him. He was my hero, Freddy. When your hero says your comic isn't cool, then maybe it's time to take a break. But you left us on a cliffhanger. That's your grandma calling. You need to get that. We are not through. Dum da da da. Hi, Freddy and Sable. Hi, sweetie. Like my new look? Super, right? When you found my newspaper comics collection and mistook them for, um, old Brad printouts, I realized your art hunt could use some more appreciation for sequential art, AKA the art of comic books. I'm going to send you to meet my old friend, comic book illustrator, Eric Battle. Hi, Freddie. I'm excited to help you with your art hunt. I'm looking forward to meeting you at one of my favorite local spots and talking more about what I do as a comic book artist and the book that I art directed called Blam! Black Lives Always Matter, Hidden African American Philadelphia of the 20th Century. See you soon. Hildegard's on her way and can give you a ride. Have fun, babies. Dun, da, da, da. Uh, 
This sounds like the perfect art hunt for us. For you. I'm taking a comics break, remember? But if Eric Battle sees your comic, then I'm sure that he'll... Freddy. <sighs> right. Got it. I'm going to get a pretzel from the corner store before my dad picks me up. Have fun. If Eric Battle happened to see the Sonic Sable comic and loved it, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, right, Google? Awesome idea, Freddy. You are such a good friend. Ah, oh, thank you, Scoogle. I try. So today we're going to draw sequential art. And the word sequential, I know it looks like a big word, but one easy way to think about it is the word sequential is also another form of the word sequence. And sequence is another big word, but if you break it down to like simple terms, it could just mean order. And in sequential art, you need order. So we're just gonna draw things that happen in order or in order of events. So before we get started, let's talk about some of the things that you need to do this. Just something to draw on, paper, pencil. But today I'll be using a marker just so you can see it better on camera. You can add things like colors if you want some things to stand out, like a marker or any color pencils. I have color pencils. If you get hungry, just add yourself a little snack. So the first thing you wanna do in sequential art is you wanna come up with an idea that can convey the passage of time to your audience. So, and it doesn't have to be anything super complicated or anything like that. So I'll start off with a very simple example. So the first thing I like to do is to clearly organize my thoughts and ideas is to draw simple boxes. Just draw about three boxes for now, kind of like a comic book. And these boxes can also be called panels. I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna draw a very simple art and you'll be able to follow my story. The idea is that all of these panels need to relate to one another. So what you draw in one, something in the second one should relate to it but it should be a little different somehow. So as you see in the first one, I've drew a sun and the ground. Sun and the ground. But this one, I'm gonna change it just a little bit. Panel three is gonna relate to panel two, just like panel two relates to panel one. We have a sequential art or a comic book story of a flower growing. And if you want, you can add quick colors. So I, I put some yellow in for my son. And then I can draw some blue for my sky. And color can also help support your story. It'll help your audience or your readers or your viewers figure out what one thing is as opposed to another. It helps bring out each individual element You see the idea? In panel one, you just looking at sun and ground. Panel two, we see that something is starting to grow. And in panel three, we see it fully grown. Now let's try another example because you can always, since you sequential art, you can always take it a step further. So let's do another one. And this time we're gonna make a story. And every story needs a few things. And I'm just gonna write them right here. Characters, a setting, and a problem. So before I even draw, one of the things I like to do is that I like to think about who my characters would be. And then I'll think about, and depending on who my characters are, that'll influence where they are. And then I think about the problem that that character may face. So, let's say I wanna draw uh, birds. The settings, they can be, I don't know, in a park. And the problem is, uh, in the field there's not much going on, or in the park there's much going on. And you're just kinda exposed. So what if this is like a really hot day? 
So now I know that I have characters which are birds, my setting is the park or a field, and my problem that is a very hot day. So the first thing I want to do in my panel one is I want to draw my characters. So, and since I know it's a hot day, let's get right to the point and draw them like really hot. When you're doing a story, it's easier to start from the very beginning and then go straight to the very end and then connect those panels through the middle. So, this is my panel one. I know that their friend, the elephant, is gonna help them to cool off and he's gonna come save the day. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw that. Now, since we know the very beginning and now we know the very end, now we need to figure out a way to connect those panels in the middle so we can complete our story. Again, your audience will read this as panel one, panel two, panel three, but that doesn't mean you have to draw it that way. So you see in panel three that the elephant is shooting water out of his trunk. Well, I think it would be a pretty good idea to show how the elephant got water in his trunk. See, there's your elephant trunk right there. And he's just sucking up the water. And now, completely done. Now, if you remember the optional, if you wanna make this clear, you can also add colors. Because this is sequential art, you don't necessarily need to know what's going on in a single panel because your other panels will support that. Sequential art is things that happen in the sequence, and the sequence means things that just happen in order. Sequential art, just that easy. This is a new art exhibit in a new gallery? This is, this is not an art gallery. This is a comic book store. Which makes it a sequential art gallery, right Hildegard? Uh, technically yes, but the ancient Egyptians didn't have this many radioactive plot points in their sequential art. Look, there's Eric. Hey, you must be Freddy, the art hunter. And you must be Eric Battle, the art maker. Thanks for letting me come by. Ah, thanks for coming by. I'd do anything for Grandma Tilly. She taught me how to axe throw. Do you have any questions for me? Oh, have I got questions. I'm here with Eric Battle, the art maker. He's been making art for over 20 years, and I have 20 years of questions. 20 years of questions? Yeah, but it'll take like at least five minutes. Where are you from? I was born and raised here in Philadelphia, and I went to school here. How do you describe your job to strangers? I let them know that I draw comic books and graphic novels, and I love my job. What makes you excited about work? I love the challenge of turning the written word into visual storytelling. Were you an artist as a kid? Yes, I was first inspired to be an artist uh, when I fell in love with comic books. What was your favorite comic as a kid? Uh, the Avengers. Any brothers or sisters? I have a ton of them. Name three artists who inspired you as a kid. Uh, the first was, I'd say, Neil Adams. Uh, Jack Kirby and Barry Windsor Smith. What did you draw the most as a kid? I spent a lot of time uh, just draw, uh, figuring out anatomy and perspective. Spider-Man or Batman? Mm, that's a tough one. I would have to say Spider-Man. 
What are three things that would help new artists to know? Learn the basics, uh, anatomy, perspective, and storytelling. Uh, be professional and um, always be open to learning. What is your current favorite comic book? I would say the X-Men. What's your favorite underrated comic book? Ah, that's a great one. Um, I was a fan of uh, Seven to Eternity. What's a song that you could listen to every single day? All About Love by Earth, Wind & Fire. Where do you go for inspiration? Uh, when I need to be inspired, I go dancing. Are you a good dancer? I hope so. <laughs> How do you feel about comic book movies? I love them. If you had to live in a comic book movie, which one would it be? I think my favorite comic book movie is still Avengers Infinity War. Nice. What's the most fun hairstyle you've ever had? Uh, well, I used to have dreadlocks, but I don't anymore. If you could have any pet as a kid, what would it have been? I used to have a hermit crab. I have a hermit crab named Skookle. <laughs> if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Mm, I would choose the superpower that I have of drawing, turning visuals, turning ideas into visuals. Hmm. What do you wish kids knew about comics? That everyone can make a comic and everyone has a story to tell. Big question. What is your exhibit about? Well, let me tell you about BLAM. BLAM. BLAM stands for Black Lives Always Matter. It's a graphic novel created in partnership led by the Charles L. Bloxon Afro-American Collection at Temple University. I was the art director and curator, so I assembled a team of amazing artists to work with writers and highlight the stories of black Americans in Philadelphia who changed the city. We have the stories of 14 ordinary black Americans who did extraordinary things, like lawyer and civil rights activist Cecil B. Moore. He lived at a time when black kids and white kids couldn't go to school together. Cecil B. Moore fought the unfair law in the courts and in the streets by uniting neighbors, teenagers, and elders to protest until Philadelphia had to change the law. And Marian Anderson was an incredible singer as a little girl. But she lived at a time when black women were not allowed to study at Philadelphia's top music schools. But Marian kept singing. And when President Roosevelt invited her to perform in Washington, D.C., 75,000 people came and millions listened over the radio and those schools who turned her away were forced to think about all the talent they lost. Regular people who used their unique talents and their passion to make a better city for everyone. Blam! So, these are real life superheroes? Yes, uh, they're quote unquote ordinary people who saw injustices and decided to take action against it. Okay, I have more questions. What do you like the most about Blam? Well, working on Blam, it gave me the opportunity to work with other artists, uh, artists who I've known for years and whose work I'd also admired. What did you learn while working on Blam? A ton of things. Uh, I did a lot of research on all of the individuals being profiled in the book. And, you know, you learned uh, Alan Locke, he was the father of the Harlem Renaissance. What do you want kids to learn from Blam? that we all have an impact on the world uh, according to the decisions that we make. Was there ever a time someone told you that you can't do something? Yes. Um, when I was first getting into the industry, um, you know, I had to prove myself a lot. And there were people who didn't necessarily see a black man being in the position of being an artist the way that I wanted to be. Uh, but I'm stubborn and I'm an artist, so I didn't stop and I kept going. Kinda like Marian Anderson. Cecil B. Moore changed the world by working with a lot of people. And Marian changed the world by deciding to not let the world change her. Exactly. So what if you know someone is a good artist, like you or Marian, but somebody else doesn't like their art? Well, it sounds like they got a bad review. Um, everyone gets a bad review every now, every now and then, even me. So what do you do when that happens? Like if somebody says your cover doesn't have enough yellow or they just don't like comics. Well, when someone gives you a bad review, you know, 
Pay attention to what they're saying. Decide on what information works for you, what information doesn't, uh, but you never let it stop you. You know, everything isn't for everyone, so if they don't like comics, there's really nothing you can do about it. Suppose a random artist at a comic convention gives your friend a bad review and it makes her want to give up making art. That's very specific. I think you're talking about being an ally, and that means showing support for someone for whatever decisions that they decide to make. Even if you don't like her decision? Yeah. You've got to trust your friend. I'm sure when she's ready to make art again, she'll let you know. <sighs> Sounds like I've got to be patient. Not my favorite thing. But I do trust Sable. And when she's ready to make art again, I'll make sure everyone knows how great she is. Sounds like you're going to be a good ally and a great friend. Eric Battle, you've given me a lot to think about. Your art is awesome, Blam is super cool, and I hope that one day you can introduce me to Spider Guy. Hmm, that's really not a thing. But, hey, did you make this comic? As much as I would love to show this to you, Eric Battle, this is Sables, and when she's ready to make art again, I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks for joining me on the Infinite Art Hunt. To be continued. Well, hello there. Are you lost when it comes to comics? Confused? Are you afraid you're not geeky enough to be cool? Well, relax, friend. You're not alone. Tip number one. You don't have to start with issue number one. Authors know new readers start all the time, so most comics are made for you to jump on anywhere in the series. Tip number two. Don't feel stuck in a superhero box. Comics are books. There are all types of topics and characters to explore. Realistic or fantasy, funny or romantic, scary or action-packed, you have options. Tip number three, don't be intimidated by the new vocabulary. Single issue means one part of the story. Trade paperback or TPB means the complete story. Back issue is an older single issue. Webcomic is a comic online. Manga refers to Japanese comics, and a graphic novel is a comic that usually comes as an original complete story. Tip number four, ask a friend, what are they reading? Tip number five, ask a professional. Your friendly neighborhood comic book shop wants to help you find your favorite new comic. And here you are. I am a cat barista about a gentleman cat that makes beverages for his weary sold customers. It's a little bit supernatural, a little bit slice of life, and I think you'll love it. Oh, thank you, dear shopkeep. <laughs> and now I'm ready, just like this feline cat barista, for new adventures and caffeinated beverages, <laughs> for a new universe of art and literature and delightful feline friends. Comics, they're for everyone, even me. Freddy! Hi, Sable, uh, just a sec. Hello, Sonic Sable. Holy cow, you made a Sonic Sable suit? Close, this is Fantastic Freddy. She's a creative problem solver who uses art to set traps for bad guys. And she's also an ally to Sonic Sable, and she's gonna be there for her whenever she can. You are cuckoo bananas. I totally understand if you wanna take a break from making comics, but when Sonic Sable is ready for action, Fantastic Freddy will be right by her side. I love the Fantastic Freddy, and I really liked that interview with Eric Battle that you sent me. Blam was awesome. It was amazing to see everyday people fighting for what they believe in. Yeah, and I stopped doing something I care about because of one Matic McMichaels. Yeah, Matic McJerkles. Yeah, maybe I draw my hands kind of claw-like, but I'm going to keep working on my art and getting better. Exactly, and some other kids might want to freeze people with sound waves or see their dad in a turbo wheelchair. Art wins again. I was wondering if I could help with your show sign-off. 
the infinite art hunt would be honored to support Sonic Sable. What do you have in mind? Hello, art hunters. And hello to any crime fighters. I am Fantastic Freddy, using my art powers to make the world more beautiful. And I'm Sonic Sable, using sound waves for justice. Today, we're uplifting a new young comic artist. Here's a sneak peek to the new comic, Sonic Sable. Coming to a comic book store near you. Probably after I finish high school. Well, that's only in a few years. Until then, enjoy. <gasps> that car appears to be parked in an accessible parking spot. But it doesn't have a placard. <gasps> Yes, yes, adore me, praise me, is what I deserve. You know I'm great, he knows it, she knows it, they know it, and that little dog knows it. Madoc McMichaels, is that your car without the accessible parking placard? Like what you see? You may look, but do not touch. And I have no need of a placard to park in any spot. In fact, with my genius, every parking spot should have a placard for me. Someone may need it. Too bad. So sad. <laughs> Guess they should have thought of that before I arrived. <laughs> Next time, respect the sign. <laughs> now let's go meet some artists. Checking in with Grandma Tilly, the adventure never ends. We're gonna go to real places, find magic, and wonder, and try new things, and see what we can discover. There's art everywhere, and I really want to explore. It's in the food that we eat, in the trees, in the forest. It's the infinite art hunt! This is amazing! I see art everywhere. It's the infinite art hunt! Lead support for this program has been provided by the William Penn Foundation. With additional support, from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Sidewater Family Foundation, the Thomas Locke Charitable Fund, and viewers like you. Continue the fun at home with art projects, activities, and printables, paired with the episode you just watched. Available at whyy.org slash the infinite art hunt. Thank you.